mastering any skill in life demands that we have a solid grasp of the underlying principles behind what we're doing. Now suturing is no exception to that rule. And what we're going to look at in the following videos is why we suture. We're going to look at the armamentarium for suturing. We're going to look at some techniques for suturing. And we're going to share some tips that you may find helpful or interesting. Now first off, why do we suture? We suture because our goal is to approximate the tissues so that we can get less secondary healing and allow the tissues to develop some tensile strength before they get too much pressure placed on them, or too much tension, I should say. So when you make an incision, let's say that we make an incision, we cut that tissue apart. If we left it the way that it is, that tissue would have to heal through all this area here through secondary intention, which is going to be a protracted healing. It's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable for the patient. If we can approximate those edges, even partially, to say this point here, we have much less of a gap that needs to heal through secondary intention, and things are going to be more comfortable and heal more uneventfully. So that's one reason why we would suture. The next reason is because sometimes we'll want to place something under the gingiva. So we might have a membrane and a bone graft. We may have some absorbable packing that we put in there. And either way, whatever it is, we want to hold it in place. So the sutures can help to close a flap that we've opened while retaining something underneath. The third reason might be if we have a bleed and we know that we want to apply some more pressure that we might pack that socket, suture over top and apply pressure to help to stop some of that bleeding. Now the armamentarium for suturing is rather straightforward. We've looked at this in other videos. We have our needle driver here, which you remember will be different from a hemostat because it has this cross-hatched pattern on it on the beaks. You will have a needle, and it could be any size, could be three-eighths of a circle, could be a half circle, quarter circle. It's going to have a swaged end on it, and it's going to have some type of either monofilament or polyfilament suture with a uh, non-absorbable or absorbable type of suture. The tissue plier here, or tissue pickup, is useful for controlling the tissues. So sometimes the tissues are slippery. You might have a loose end on your flap that you need to get a hold of. These are very gentle to the tissues. You can hold it with gentle pressure, evert the edges to help you to enter through at a perpendicular angle with your needle. You can also use this when you are suturing and maybe you can't make a complete bite or a complete pass from one side to the other of your flap. So say you're, you're spanning a larger area, you need to make two bites, you can stop. Sometimes this needle will turn or spin in the socket. This can reach down in there, pick it out, and then get it back to your needle driver, which is a very helpful function for this as well. Now, we also have our suture removal scissors, which you'll use in cases where you've used a non-absorbable suture. It's got that little concavity there that's going to slip onto the suture and snip it away. And finally here, we've got this Olsen Hagar needle driver, which has a needle driver tip and a scissor in it, which you can use to cut your sutures. So these are all the basic things that you would need to be able to place really nice sutures in all of your patients. We're going to now move on to another video talking about the technique and some useful tidbits that you could apply to what you're doing.